that one's uh, stuck with me for years from from when I saw it. Another one, gosh, you got me, you got me. The opening scene with the cultural awareness teachers dancing reminded me of some of my favourite dance scenes in films like Napoleon Dynamite and Moonrise Kingdom. What are some of your favourite film dance scenes? Pulp Fiction, oh, an, an obvious choice there, I, I think. Uh, and um, I mean, I think you've already named probably two of my favourite ones uh, yeah. as well. Uh, oh, good question. Dance sequences. Uh, um, 500 Days of Summer, when he had that long dance sequence that he has. That's, uh, that one's uh, stuck with me for years from, from when I saw it. Another one, gosh. You got me. You got me. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, you named two really good ones. Napoleon Dynamite is the Napoleon Dynamite one. It's really, so good. Um, All of that. <laughs> <laughs> what would you do if they let you stay? I would like to wear suit and work in office. I was taking a chance to make life better. I want to play for Shia Football Club. Ha! You ever think about who you were before all of this? I cannot be myself back home. In Syria, very famous. Maybe a little. Maybe I could be your agent. Like Tom Cruise with Jerry Maguire. Limbo uses memories of happier times rather than relying on images of trauma to get across Omar's experience. How do you think switching the focus to nostalgia rather than fear changes our understanding of what refugees go through? We've been so used to these sensationalised treatment of, of, of the refugee crisis and, and I think that part of that is showing the most tragic I I images um, of, of the, the refugee experience and that has sort of led to this sort of kind of dehumanisation of, of refugees through the sort of pitying of refugees and I think by shift kind of almost like getting rid of all of that and shifting it across to you know it is about family and it's about uh, loss and it's about identity um, so by focusing on these things we're actually you know drawing parallels between you know it doesn't matter where you're from what your background is um, you know we can all relate to these things and we can all find parts of ourselves in, in the characters on on screen, so I think that, that was the, the you know the intention was to find that kind of re relatability and what connects us rather than what kind of separates us from from refugees and asylum seekers. Was there anything that you connected to within the refugee characters yourself in the film? I guess I guess in terms of the the humor the humor used something that I uh, you know grew up with you know being you know coming from a Middle Eastern background as well you know we use humor as a way to uh, as a mechanism to, to kind of reflect on you know you know bad times um, also also the just just the the, the patriotism you know the, the, the way he describes his country and the, the love the love for his family he's so family orientated. I think I think when going into this, uh, it was important to to see so, as many similarities as possible uh, between myself and, and Omar. Um, and uh, yeah, he's a family man, so am I. You know, I, I love you know, I love sitting around eating with my family, singing, you know, playing music, stuff, all the, all those little things that you know that it encompasses him. And also, just like Ben rightly said, makes him human. We, we forget that he is, you know, this, this, you know, he, that he's an asylum seeker. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I think, I, I, I think just for me adding to that, I think that that idea of, I think that a lot of people resonate with the, the, the fact, you know, the family, the idea of family. And I think for me, kind of writing the film, obviously, it's not a lived experience of mine. You know, I've not been through what Omar and the other characters have been through, but you know, I have been, you know, I've lit, I've spent most of my adult life living in a different country from my family, being at distant from them, you know, communicating by phone, you know, the relationship with, with my brother, um, you know, I've, he's lived away from me for, for probably, te, you know, 10 years, you know, he lived in, he lived in China and, and all of these things. And I think that it's yeah it's though it's it's sort of those things that even though I, yeah i've not experienced being a refugee and all of these you know my the distance i've spent from my family is out of 
sort of out of choice. I'm not like chosen to be away from my family, but but uh, that in in yeah, in that sense, it's kind of I think yeah, lots of people will kind of relate to to these things in in different ways, regardless of their backgrounds. You mentioned it wasn't an experience you went through yourself. How did you then ensure that you were telling these stories authentically, would you say? From kind of the sort of idea formulation and going from the beginning with the script writing, I think it's something that my, the sort of specifics of my own experience from living in Syria and working with NGOs and refugee camps, going into the screenwriting process is you know, really feeling the responsibility to do justice to the subject matter and and making sure that that even though it's not my lived experience, that I can at least become an, you know an, an authority on the subject matter and try and do justice to it. And that's through doing a lot of research and speaking to people that have been through the asylum system, um, you know, speaking to 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 organisations that work with refugees on a day to day basis, and um, spending a lot of time getting it wrong and 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 kind of tearing the papers up and and having to start again and really kind of interrogate what I'm doing and and and, and how how I was approaching um the, the making of this film I think it does it with a lot of empathy and really asks us to put our assumptions aside so yeah thank you, well, thank you. that's all we have time for but thank you guys thank so you I- great talking to you thank you yeah.